What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are breaking into a brand new series here on the channel called My Damn Thoughts. This is something that's kind of been in the works for a long time as far as my ideas and things of that nature. So basically, what this series is, is the main part of it is going to be about sets that we get, such as this, the AEW and Match Collection Series number two. We're going to do it with elite sets. We're going to do it with all kinds of things, but it's not only going to relate to action figures. I could also do My Damn Thoughts on random things that happen in the real world wrestling world in the action figure community just say Toys R Us comes back we can do a my damn thoughts on Toys R Us coming back you know what I'm saying so that's kind of the basis for it but the main line of the whole entire series is going to be covering these full sets like we used to do in our own videos where we would review the last two figures in the set then we would rank the set and kind of get into those things in this video we're going to take the full entire wave depending on what that wave is we'll kind of determine where we go with the video but for this AEW and match series 2 video we're going to dive into all the different things that I want to cover about this set. We're going to rank this set and we're just going to get into some different details that maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but it's kind of just breaking down the entire set and giving my own damn thoughts about everything about this wave. So I have a few different categories about this wave that we're going to break down and then at the end of the video we will rank the set just like we used to do in past videos. So with all that being said guys, let's dive into my damn thoughts on AEW and Match Collection Series number two. Now when this wave was first shown off to us, I think the biggest thing about it was the Sting figure. I think everybody was super excited for the Sting and and I think it pretty much lived up to expectations. I appreciate every figure in this wave. I think overall it is a healthy wave. I don't think that it will shelf form a whole ton. I think that there may be a couple shelf warmers in the set, but overall I think this set will sell very, very well at retail. And I don't think they're going to have a problem moving units. You know, I, th I think MJF may be the biggest shelf warmer out of the set. And that is our first category. The biggest shelf warmer that I think will, will shelf warm the most is going to be the MJF figure. And honestly, that's just because we've had so many of them, right? We're going to get into the numbers in a few minutes. Minutes. But this is our fifth MJF if you count both versions of the Chase figure. We had the Unrivaled Series 2, we had the Unrivaled Series 6, and so MJF I think will be the biggest shelf warmer. You know, it's uh, nothing groundbreaking. It's kind of a boring attire. I just don't see it flying off shelves like the rest here. You got a lot more quality to work with with the rest of the wave, and I think that's going to hurt the MJF at the end of the day. Now we just talked about the number of figures, so I want to do that real quick. Starting out with Sting, this is our first Sting figure. This is the first Sting figure that we have in hand. If you guys want another Sting figure, you're going to have to get the Chase variant of the Series 2 Unmatched Chase. You know, this is a Luminaries collection, but there is a Chase variant in this set, and it is Sting, so if you guys want the Chase variant, that'll be the second Sting. And then there is a Walmart exclusive Sting coming that will make our third Sting, and I'm sure this won't be the last Stings that we get. I'm sure we will see a bunch of future Stings, whether they be throwback, whether they be current. Sting is probably one of those guys that's a staple in the, in the AEW action figure line. I feel like he'll show up pretty frequently compared to some other figures. Now for Tay Conti, this is our first Tay Conti, and we're not going to see one, at least on paper. We don't know of one that we're getting very soon. There's no Chase Barris. There's no craziness like that. Tay Conti, this is her only figure right now, and I don't know where that stands in the future. I think that we could possibly see a lot of her in the future, but we also may not get one for a very long while. I think that's one of those 50-50 balls where you throw a Hail Mary at the end of the game. This one is probably worth the one that you want to pick up. If you're wanting a Tay Conti, I don't think there's one in the works as of now. Next up is going to be Wardlow, and just like Tay Conti, this is our first Wardlow, and the there's no Chase variants or anything like that. I feel like Wardlow will probably have a random one in like Series 13 or something of the Unrivaled Wave. You know, not one that's going to pump out a lot, but I feel like his next figure will more than likely be a suited body. But I think Wardlow, this is a great pickup, and I do believe that it's going to be a minute before we get one. So if you guys want Wardlow, this is the one to cash in on right, while we have him right now. While we have a shot at it right now, go ahead and grab it. Next up, guys, we do have Ortiz, and this is actually our second Ortiz. The first Ortiz that we got came in Unrivaled Collection Series number four, and so this is our second version, and I do think this is an upgrade to that figure. Speaking of upgrades, this is Santana, and I think featured in this set, this is his second figure that we have seen of him, just like Ortiz. They have both came in the same way both times. In Unrivaled Series 4, we had Santana and Ortiz, and then in Unmatched Collection Series 2, we had Santana and Ortiz, and just like Ortiz, this is obviously an upgrade from his previous figure. And last but not least, we have MJF, who again, we have seen five figures from. We had uh, like a, a four-pack that was, that was advertised for a moment, or it was advertised, it was pretty much leaked, but you have his Unrivaled Series 2 figure, you have his Chase Variant Series 2 figure, you have his Unrivaled Series 6 figure, you have the Unmatched Series 2, which I'm holding right now, and then you have the Chase Variant of the Unmatched Series 2, which I also think is not that great. So, overall, this is our fifth MJF, and MJF is one of those guys that are gonna plug and plug and plug and plug. He is an AEW original, so I feel that he will obviously be plugged into multiple sets in the future, and that's what we get from MJF. Now, about the Chase figures in the set, I think 
overall, they're pretty garbage. There's not a lot of differentiation between them, and I feel like the Chase variants are either hot fire or they're hot garbage, and I think in this case, they are kind of hot garbage. I'm not a big fan of either Chase in this set. Sting and MJF both kind of are, are kind of bland, especially the Sting. The Sting is just a graphic change on his t-shirt, and MJF, again, is just not a fun... It just doesn't look that fun, man. It's just not one of those that I am, you know, breaking my neck trying to get. So, I think both Chase figures are kind of garb. Moving on up, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into the best head sculpt of this set, and to me, that is going to go to Sting. I just think, overall, they really captured the likeness of Sting. I think, overall, compared to Mattel figures in the past and every other person that's ever attempted a Sting, I think this is the best version of a Sting. I think it really captures that head shape, that jawline, the cheek structure, the face paint. I think that it looks just like Sting, and they did an excellent job. Even though this full wave was pretty damn good on the head sculpts, I'd say that most of the head sculpts were very, very good, and if you guys want to know what the worst head sculpt's going to be, I'm going to go with MJF. I think MJF has the weakest head sculpt. I think that it, it looks just a bit goofy. Like, it's not, like, horrific or anything. It's not, like, the worst head scan I've ever seen, but there's definitely way better head sculpts in the wave, and he just came up a little bit short. You know, I, I just feel like if his figures are going to be very similar in gear, they probably need to focus a lot more energy on their head sculpts and trying to get those smirks and those, you know, that likeness to MJF really spot on. But there are your head sculpts, the worst and the best. Moving on to the figure that has the best articulation, I went with Santana. Yes, this may shock a bit of you, but overall, it has the best articulation. Head feels good. Arms can get a good range of motion. I think the ab crunch is the best in the set, bar none. No doubt about it, this is the best ab crunch in the game. He has a very clean ball joint split C. Upper thigh cut, double jointed knees. It's just like his last figure, but the Santana figures are underrated in the articulation department, man. A lot of the figures in the set don't have a great ab crunch. Ortiz, Wardlow, Tay Conti, and Sting all kind of struggle to bend over. I guess it's just the way that the lower torsos are made for most of these figures. Like, he's a bigger guy. You have the overall throw and the shirt. You have a women's figure where that doesn't get the soft goods on the bottom or the, the softer rubber for the bottom piece. And then you have another t-shirt overthrow. And then MJF, he has kind of a bulkier torso. So Santana kind of walks away with the articulation standpoint. But I like this figure and it has the best articulation in the entire set. Moving into the best accessory category. This one is going to go to Wardlow. He comes with interchangeable hands, but he also comes with this super sick interchangeable head sculpt that I really like. And you guys are probably wondering, well, Ortiz has an interchangeable head sculpt. Tay Conti has an interchangeable head sculpt. Santana has an interchangeable head sculpt. Well, they do, Brad, but they're not as good as this one. I think that Wardlow is a guy who really needed the screaming expression. I think Santana and Ortiz could also use the screaming expression, but overall, I think that they can get away with the head sculpts that they come with, and they didn't necessarily need that extra head sculpt, so I think that Wardlow really warrants, you know, a pissed off head and then a screaming head, so I think this is the best accessory in the set. We didn't get any cloth goods. We didn't get anything like that, so interchangeable head sculpts are one of the better things as well, and the screaming head sculpt from Wardlow is perfect. Now, I know we covered the best articulation in the set. Now, we're going to cover the worst articulation in the set, and for this, it's going to go to Tay Conti. Now, this one probably shocks you because it's actually one of the better articulated women's figures. It may even be the most articulated. I think Brandy could probably give her a run for the money, you know, they could get in the ring, square up, spar off a little bit right there, but her head sculpt doesn't really get any articulation. Her long hair kind of prevents that. It will pop off, and the other head doesn't really go on that much, and when it does, it still can't move around. Her ab crunch is very weak. You guys can see here, the upper part, you get a little bit of a bend, but that lower part's not giving anything to you, so if she gets kicked in the gut, you gotta bend her completely over. Her split is just not the best. The thighs are a bit thickums right there, and like, I get it, but I still think that, you know, it, it just kind of, like, look how wonky that kind of looks. It's just the range of motion is not the best on this figure. She does have, she does have boot rotation, and she does have these feet, but her feet are kind of loosey-goosey, and her ankle pivot isn't the best in the universe. It was very, very close with Sting, but at the end of the day, I think the Sting can articulate just a bit better than the Tay Conti. She beat it out by just a little bit there. It's still a really great women's figure, and i probably say it's the best women's figure we've seen so far from Jazzwares and AEW, but it does have the worst articulation of this Unmatched Series 2 collection. Now, before we rank this set, I do want to compare it to Unmatched Series 1, and in Unmatched Series 1, I think we had a pretty solid wave. You had Darby Allen, Kenny Omega, Britt Baker, Miro, LJ and Cody, and a pretty good repaint Dustin Rhodes. And it's kind of hard if I were to compare the sets. I don't know who would win, honestly, because you have a full LJN figure in there, and I think they're doing an LJN every other set, so it's kind of hard to compare. But I think at the end of the day, I think overall quality-wise, I think that Series 2 is a just a hair better than Series number 1. Even though I love the Kenny, I love the Darby, the Miro is pretty solid, the Britt Baker is solid, the LJ and Cody is solid, and the Dustin is solid, but overall, pound for pound, I think this set edges them out by just like a bear, just a freaking peach fuzz hair on my son's cheek. And that brings us to the end of the video where we are going to rank AEW and Matt.
Match Series 2 from worst to best. So coming in at the bottom, at number 6, it's going to go to MJF. I think you guys probably saw this one coming, right? You probably saw this one coming. I mean, he has the worst head sculpt. It's kind of a boring figure. It's his fifth figure that we've seen, or it's, you know, it's his fourth or fifth, depending on how you look at it. It's a black gear. Yet again, the head sculpt's not the strongest. He comes with a rubber coat. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, man. I'm going to go with MJF at the bottom. Coming in at number five, it's going to go to Santana. Now, you're probably losing your mind. You're probably like, how the blue hell is Santana coming in at the number five spot after you just praised it about the articulation? He does have an interchangeable head. He has a pretty cool gear. Well, Brad, it just kind of comes down to all the different criteria. You guys know that I actually forgot to cover the rules of the ranking, which I usually do in my other videos, but excitement level for the figure, how it feels in the hand, articulation, head sculpt, accessories. How much use am I going to get out of it? A lot of things go into that ranking system, and so over all those things considered, Santana comes in at number five. I just think the other four were slightly better than him, and he knows it. Number four in the set, I'm going with Tay Conti. She's a very solid figure. We've already covered her articulation. I think her head sculpts could be a little bit better, which kind of docked her in this sense, but I love the gear. I like Tay Conti a lot as a performer. I think she's getting better and better. I was pretty excited to add another women's figure to the collection. I think these women's figures are also getting better and better. She has the lower leg rotation, which I just freaking love, to thank God. But at the end of the day, I like the other three figures in the set better than her. And I just think the thing that really holds this figure back is I think the head sculpt's the most part, but I'm sure her next figure will be improved. Next up, guys, number three is going to go to Wardlow. Yes, bobbleheaded Wardlow. No, but seriously, though, why is it doing that? Pretty tight. I don't know why it's doing that head bob. Kind of looks like Tom Hardy a little bit. Anyways, Wardlow feels really good in the hand, man. He can articulate pretty well as well. He just feels hefty. He's one of those figures that you just want to make a faction with and beat the hell out of people with. He's a very fun figure. Just feels really good. Great articulation. You got the good knee pads on there. Arms look nice and jacked. He's just a square guy. I feel like he could beat the hell out of you. It's, it's just a nice figure, man. You get that screaming experience which was the best accessory in the set. I just think that Wardlow is a great piece, and he came in at number three. And coming into our top two, man, we have Ortiz and Sting. And coming in at number two, I'm going Ortiz, and number one, I'm going Sting. Now, how I pick my number one is typically I look at the full wave and I say, which of these figures, if I could only purchase one figure from this entire wave, which figure would it be? And that's kind of knowing everything I know about the figure, which figure would I pick if I could only pick one? And that would be Sting. I think that they really captured that likeness. It's very exciting to have a Sting figure from AEW. While I don't really like his get up, it still looks just like him. Like, it represents him perfectly in figure form. I think the head sculpt's really good. The articulation's solid. I don't like what they did with the waist right there. You know, I really wish there was an, uh, a full crotch piece underneath that shirt. But I still think the figure's really solid. My only thing that I don't really like about it is the loose ankles. Like, he wants to fall forward on me. And again, the t-shirt thing. But at the end of the day, he has really tight joints. He poses around really well. I love his bad accessory. Head sculpt's really solid. And uh, Sting just comes in at the bona fide number one spot. But for the Ort figure. Do not sleep on this Ortiz, man. It has a really unique look to it. You get the uh, interchangeable head sculpts. You don't have to deal with that, in, you know, that inner circle t-shirt anymore. He has all his tattoos, except for the forearm, which is missing. You know, he is missing that. But all these one-of-one -one sculpts, camo pants, you get the camo overall, teal headband. It's just a really cool figure. It's very toy etic, if you will, and I love it. I think it's fantastic, and I had a ton of fun posing him around and doing all the things. He just looks really cool in figure form. So, recapping, we have Sting number one, Ortiz number two, Wardlow number three, Three, Conti number four, Santana number five, and MJF at the number six spot. But that pretty much wraps up my ranking on AEW Unmatched Collection Series number two and all of the breakdown of the set, man. Please let me know what you think of these videos down in the comment section below. Thought it'd be a great way to debut the My Damn Thoughts episode series. I'm sure we will get into more things as we develop the My Damn Thoughts series. I'm sure we'll get better in the presentation the way we do things, and I, I hope to I hope to improve it and get it to one of the staples of the channel. And one thing that that people want to watch over and over to get their insight on these figures and these waves as a whole. And it kind of separates from the individual reviews, and we still get everybody in the set to have their own review to break them down and get, you know, all those figures analyzed, and we don't have to do the ranking all in one video and all those different things, man. So that pretty much wraps up this My Damn Thoughts episode, man. Subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at My Damn Toys. Let me know your thoughts on this set. Rank them down in the comment section below. And do not forget, man, these are My Damn Thoughts. You cross the line. I've been